So welcome everybody. Welcome to a new human experience podcast. Today is July the 15th, 2021. And the topic tonight is Prana. Um, the, so this is really the, the, the second half of talking about energy centers. And in the beginning of July, I started actually to, to explore different tools uh, or different um, understanding that can help us expand our consciousness and also give, um, give us some tools to be able to support ourselves on this journey of, of really learning more about ourselves. And I started to explore about the, the seven major energy centers in our body. And last week we talked about some of the symptoms of um, imbalances within the first three chakras. So just a, a very brief recap. The first chakra is the root chakra and it is really our connection to mother earth, to this playground that we are on right now and um, the imbalances, like if there is any imbalance, it most likely would have something to do with um, not being supported and not feeling a connection because the root chakra is really our connection to this reality. So the second chakra is the sacral chakra and it is about personal empowerment. So any disturbance in this energy center would most likely be felt as a disempowerment um, on a personal level. So you would feel somehow that you're not good enough or somehow you don't feel that you um, like most, so generally you don't feel enough. You feel disempowered. So that would be an indication of any imbalance within the sacral chakra. And then the third chakra is the solar plexus. And it is about our social empowerment, meaning our, um, it is also about empowerment, but in a social setting. So disturbance in this center would be felt as that somehow you, um, on a, on a social level, there is a, somehow you don't feel empowered. Either you don't feel that you um, belong to a certain social group, or you may feel somehow that you, um, other people don't notice you. So that kind of disempowerment in a social setting, that would be evidence of any imbalance within the third chakra. So this week, then, we start with the next chakra, the fourth chakra, which is the heart chakra. And this is the heart, the, the, um, the quality of light of this energy center is green. Green ray is called the green ray chakra. And this is an important chakra. And it will be actually one of the most important energy centers for us in, in this time and also for a lot of the foreseeable future for us to work with balancing this chakra. So what are some of the um, evidence that this chakra is, there is some imbalance in this chakra is that this chakra is about universal love. So if there is any imbalance in this chakra, you would have more of a um, difficult time in being able to love in a universal way, meaning to, to love. Um, so it's, it's more about non-personal love. It is not, so even though you may be still be able to feel love, but for you love, if there is any imbalance in this center, love has to be very um, limited. 
you will have to be able to get something. You will have to love in a way that um, according to you. So you would have a laundry list of, okay, I would feel love if A happened, B happened, C happened. So, you know, if, if you, you know, if you get um, showered with gifts, if people talk to you nice, only nice, and also if people are dressed a certain way or look a certain way. So those, so those would be very um, personalized love, whereas more compassion and universal love is really being able to love without any of these conditions. You will be able to love and understand love from a point of view that this person is a part of me and you would feel this connection with that person. However, if there is any imbalance in the, the heart chakra, that would be, you would not, it would be tough for you to feel that. It would be tough for you to um, be able to love without conditions. It would be, okay, if, if you love me, then, you know, you better give me a ring. You better give me at least, you know, uh, all these things. So that's more of the evidence of imbalance in this, this chakra. And, um, yeah, it would definitely be felt as difficulties in giving or receiving <clears throat> compassion and universal love. And then the fifth chakra is the throat chakra, which is blue ray. It is the color of this chakra is blue. So this energy is about self-knowledge. It's about understanding and communicating that, that understanding of yourself. It's about authenticity. It's about knowing who you are and then being able to communicate your truth to the world. So it is both taking in, so it's both taking in in that you, it's an inward knowledge of yourself and it's also outward communication, being able to communicate what it is that you stand for, what it is that you represent, and what it is that um, you know. So your, so it is both communicating inward and also communicating outward as well. So if there's any blockage in this chakra, it will most likely manifest as any difficulties in. Um, acknowledging and understanding yourself and you would have trouble communicating your needs so you would have this feeling that oh I'm being misunderstood and so and also um, you may have difficulties understanding others as well because you don't even know yourself so it kind of makes it harder for you to understand where others are coming from as well. So this is all the evidence that there's a blockage in your throat chakra. So the sixth chakra um, is called um, by a couple of names. It's called the pineal chakra because that's where the, the pineal gland is also called the third eye. So it's either the pineal chakra or the third eye chakra. And the color for this chakra is indigo. <clears throat> and this really, this energy center is really about sending and receiving information from different dimensions, from, from um, pretty much the cosmos, I would say, because we all actually are able to tap into energies that's beyond our physical reality. So we all have that ability. It is just that most people have not developed this center enough to be able to understand the, the communication. And also if the, there is any blockage in the center, 
then it actually would um, make it even harder for you to be able to do that. So imbalance in this center will have a certain feeling. It's like you feel like you're being trapped. You feel like your anxiety. You tend to overthink and also um, lack of inspiration. Or it may be felt as headaches or inability to focus. So these are all evidence of imbalance in this center. And um, the last chakra is the crown chakra. <clears throat> the, the crown chakra is really at the top of our head. And while the root chakra is our connection to earth, to mother earth, to this playground that we are on, our crown chakra is really our connection to the sun and also the sun as a representative of the rest of the universe and also a, um, a local, a very localized version of the creator energy. So when there is any disturbance in this chakra, this is what that means. Um, the seventh chakra, the crown chakra though, As far as I know, it is, it is really the totality of all the other chakras. So meaning that if all your other chakras are doing fine, then this chakra would be okay as well. There is very little um, in terms, there's, there's really very little that you can or need to do in order to balance or imbalance this chakra because this chakra is the totality of all the others. So um, you cannot just balance this energy center without going through all the others as well. And if you go through all the others and have them balanced, then this seventh chakra will be as balanced as you can possibly make it in this. So the color for this chakra is um, they're actually more than one color. It has been represented as purple, but it's also represented as white as well. So why white? Because this center is really the combination of all the other centers. So um, if you think of the, the, the colors of a rainbow, is that it is really a, a separation when all the different centers are separated, you can see the different colors. But when everything comes together to the crown area, then it will look white. It will look white. So that's why both purple or white are appropriate representation of this chakra as well. So this is really all the, 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 the seven chakras within our body. Our body has a lot of energy centers. This, this is just one way of understanding our energy centers. And also to, to let you know is that more importantly is that how do we balance our energy centers? And my understanding of energy centers is that um, energy is infinite. We all have infinite supply of energies, infinite supplies of energy. And the energy centers actually is how it modulates our body's ability to take in energies from our environment. And when our energy centers are balanced, it will be able to take in energy as needed. And whenever there is any imbalance, then it will actually um, interfere with how that particular energy center is able to draw in energy. So 
that's my understanding of what the the, the the why it is important to balance our energy centers. Now there are so many ways to balance. It's just um, as many ways as there are teachers. So that's why I would really want to talk about principles first. And after I kind of talk about the principles, then you can actually come up with your way, your own way of um, balancing your own energy centers. Because as long as you work with the principles, then you are, you are pretty set. So the first principle I've already mentioned last time, first principle is that everything is energy. So everything is simply energy. I'm energy, your energy, sound, any kind of sound you hear is energy. Any thought you think of is energy. So all is energy. So first principle. And the second principle is that energy goes where your mind goes. That's one way of putting it. So another way of putting it is that um, you can direct energy with your mind. So when you have clear mind and you clearly know who you are and what you want to do, then all you have to do is just use your mind to direct energy wherever it is that you want it to go. And the, um, the third thing I want to, it's, it's really not quite a, um, a principle, but it's, it is that um, in terms of balancing your energy, is you have to work from your mind level first. The first thing to balance is your mind. So when your mind and your thinking is not balanced, then um, you can do whatever you like to balance your energy, but it will be short lived. You may be, you know, going to healers and have all your, you know, seven chakras balanced. But if your mind is not balanced, if your thinking is not balanced, then it may take you all of 30 minutes, you know, the next, the next phone call from someone who talks to you about something that will trigger you, then you will be completely out of balance. So that's why before you balance your body, before you balance your energy, first is to balance your mind. And so the first thing I would suggest is really to practice. Practice, first thing is to um, do meditation, you know, just make sure you start to do meditation because when you do meditation, you are starting to train your mind to become more disciplined because when you, um, when you discipline your mind, then it, it, you just builds on it. And these other practice that I would suggest you do um, apart from meditation, it is also to clear out your mind every day. So what do I mean by that? Is that before you go to bed or maybe um, don't, go, don't do this you know, right before you, 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 you fall asleep, but do this maybe, you know, take about, uh, let's say about an hour before you go to bed when you are when you know that your day is done, most of your day is done, all of the, the things that you needed to do is done, and you're just winding down for the evening, then take a bit of time to start doing this practice, is to just review your day in your mind very quickly. Let's say, okay, I woke up this morning. I have, um, let's say, I, I, I know I need to go to the hairdresser at 1130 and then when I come back I have to go do go pre finish my podcast so I kind of just um, review my day very quickly and it only takes maybe about a minute or two you, you just run through for most people anyways and unless if you are Elon Musk or if you are 
um, running a multi-million, uh, multi-billion dollar um, enterprise, then maybe there's more happening. But for most people, it would be quite easy to just run through your day in your mind and then just notice how you feel about what you've done that day. You either have a, a sense of, okay, I got um, triggered by this person and I, I still, you know, I, I'm still feeling a little something about that, that conversation that I have with this person. So you would just notice, okay, what's unfinished, uh, unprocessed emotions. You, you look for those. That's what, that's what you do when you review um, the day is you just scan and say, okay, this is something you notice the things that are emotions unprocessed or things that you have not let go of it's things that you like you still it's still um dicks at you so you notice those things and and then you just take um take five ten minutes to just process the emotions so just allow yourself to feel that unprocessed emotion because sometimes um you are at when you go throughout your day you may not have the the luxury of processing all your emotions right there and then so now give yourself time to just process any unprocessed emotions and just let go of the day and if after about five ten minutes you still feel that there's something stuck there and you um you have a feeling that okay this this may be something that is going to take longer than you know 10 15 minutes for me to do this then you just write it down whatever it is that's unfinished you write it down so that you won't forget about it because um if you don't write it down you will forget about it and it will however your unconscious mind will not forget about it it will it will build up so just do it every day is to clear your mind let go of anything, process all the emotions every day. Because if you do this every day, then um, it's much easier to handle. You won't be all of a sudden, if something happens in your life, you won't have the whole thing blow up um, so much because you've been handling it every day. When you, when you do it every day, it's just a little bit of something. But if you let it go for a year 10 years then um, it becomes uh, very backlogged and and that's how energy gets stuck whereas if you take the time to do it to just review your day and just let go and process then then you clear your slate every day it's actually much easier to clear things out nowadays because the energy is so high. Like unless you are not ready to let go of that, that whatever that thing may be, then then yeah, then no matter how high the energy is, <clears throat> you, you're not ready to let go of you. You're still not ready. But when you set your mind to let go of things now, if you really have the intention to process the emotions and let go of things, they go very quickly. And whatever is undone, just made a note of it and just make sure that at least once a week, you set um, aside some time to just clear all of those things that you didn't get a chance to clear. So that is um, really a practice and I would highly suggest that you take up because when you clear your mind, um, all you have to do is just think of, let's say, uh, if you your if your thinking is is clear every day, and you 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 keep doing the the letting go, then all of a sudden you find okay, I I I went out today and you know something happened and now I'm I'm feeling disempowered. So so let's say. 
second chakra. So you know, you know that you're feeling dis disempowered, and it's really about, you know, it's it's a personal. So there's this second chakra. So all you have to do is just think of the 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 color of the second chakra. It is orange. So then you just think of the brightest orange color, and you just put that color in your second chakra. And you just set the intention that you want to balance this chakra out. And that's all it takes. And if somehow you feel that it's not balancing um, quickly for you, then you just ask, what do I need to do? What do I need to know in order to balance my second chakra, my, my um, sacral chakra? Then then ask for that because if you ask, if you really ask now, the answer will come. It may not be, you may not hear it in your head, but you will find that um, some, some other way that the clues will come to you. It may be that, oh, you have this dynamics in your family that you haven't quite let go of yet. You haven't um, you, you really have not processed properly yet. That's why when you have a similar situation, it kind of triggered you. So, so when you just let go, you just look at that dynamics and you just let it go. <clears throat> then it will become easier for you to clear yourself energetically as well, because the energy is stuck most of the time. It's because of um, beliefs. It's because of how your mind um, is because of some thinking of some stories that's there. So when you are ready to let go of the story, then all you have to do is just think of the color and set the intention and it is done. It's actually very easy nowadays because the energy is so high. And um, that's one way you just use the color because each chakra has a particular color. All you have to do is if you know which energy centers is off, because um, by the, the, the evidence, you know, <clears throat> you have some idea which center is involved. So you just have to go to that center, clear it. And if you don't know, let's say, let's say something that is, you, you can't really figure out, okay, which center is that? So, so then what you do is, <clears throat> because I've mentioned that those, the energy center, um, even though there are multiple energy centers, but there is one energetic body because you are, you're not seven parts. You are just one. So your energies is actually just one. So, and I've already mentioned that those different colors actually all combine to be white. So if you're not sure which particular center and you still feel that there is some imbalance, then what you do is you just set the intention that you want to balance all of your chakra as much as you can. And you just imagine this, the most brilliant white color. Because all the different energies, it makes up white light. So you just imagine yourself being surrounded by this brilliant, brilliant white light. And you will feel it too, because when I imagine myself in white light, walking to white light, I can feel it. So, so um, energy goes where you're, you ask it to go. And you can imagine the brightest, brilliant white light and surround yourself by this white light and this white light, because within the white light, it's, there are all 
of those seven colors. So this white light alone will be able to do its job in balancing all of your seven chakras. So that's another way of doing it. So I'm just actually um, applying these the, the principles that all is energy and that energy goes where the mind is. So all you have to do is just um, think of ways you can just make it up yourself. And besides just using your imagination, if you if you really need to have something that is more tangible, then the other thing that you can do is to, to know that water is very cleansing. So before you um, so instead of using your mind and imagine that you're, you're surrounded by white light, you can actually just set the intention that I'm going to take a bath or shower right now and I want to clear all of my energy centers with this shower or with this bath. And if you want to be fancy, you can, you know, you know look up what... Um, like you can actually put things in your... If you're taking a bath, you can actually put different... Um, essential oils or you can you can put um, you can actually bring um, crystals that's going to assist you in, in, in energizing the water as well so you can be very creative water is cleansing so you can just set the intention I'm going to the shower I'm going to the bath I'm going to clean up all, use this water to clear up all my energy centers. So that's another way to do it as well. So very simple. Just, you just know the, the, the principle. Set the intention and then just use water to do its job. And besides water is cleansing, fire is also cleansing. So how do you use fire? Because you can't jump into a fire. That's not going to work. So the, the, the um, to use fire is that you, um, <clears throat> so you write out, let's say you write out how you feel, what's the imbalance that you feel. So you write it all out, you write out anything um, that is connected to that feeling, that particular issue, you write it all out. If you want, you can draw pictures, you know, do as fancy as you want, just make sure that all of the issue that you can think of about uh, a certain thing is on that piece of paper. And then you just, um, so then, then you just, once you, you're satisfied that everything is included, then you can um, burn this piece of paper. And so you just go to, let's say go to the, um, sink and then just you know safe place to burn this piece of paper so you set the intention that i am ready to um, transform this issue that is disempowered that make me feel disempowered i'm ready to transform it and so you start to burn this piece of paper and you really witness this burning and you have no attachment to how this burns, how this is going to be transformed. But you set the intention that with this fire, I'm going to transform this. I'm going to use this fire element to transform it. And I've actually used this. And um, it is it is actually very interesting that is when you witness the burning you actually can can see the, the 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 energy as well in that if it's something that you're really ready to let go of it will burn fast it will burn you know quite easily i've actually seen other people do this and they try to you know burn the piece of paper and they have difficulties they have trouble burning it <laughs> It's like it will it will burn a little bit and then the fire would die down, and they have to light the fire again, the light that piece of paper again. It is actually quite amusing to see how this plays out, 
but um, that's that's what I mean by you can use fire as well to assist you is um, is to really write out the thing that you want to transform and then burn that piece of paper and just when you actually see that piece of paper with um, all your energy poured out on it, where you've written out, you know, what it is in your mind, what's involved and all your stories, whatever in it, you put in energy in that and you actually see that energy being transformed by the fire. It sets a signal into you unconsciously. So it, it really, it's a way of communicating with your body that you are really ready to let this go, to see this transform and have this transformed. And then you notice how um, the, the energy shifts from this. So that's another way of using water or fire to transform it. Um, the other thing you can use to transform it is really earth, actually. Earth is a very balancing element. So this is using the elements to, to assist you in, in transforming it. So earth is a balancing energy. So water and fire is more of a um, Trans, um, it's, it's transforming in a different way. Earth transformed by balancing, whereas water and fire transform by destruction. So it's a different kind of transforming. So when you use earth energy, all you have to do is connect with Mother Earth and just invite Mother Earth to assist you in balancing all your energy centers. And so you connect with Mother Earth, send love to Mother Earth and feel the energy of Mother Earth coming back in. And you set the intention that you want to enlist the help of Mother Earth to assist you in balancing your body. <clears throat> and so whatever it is, that you, you feel that it's imbalanced in that moment, you just, with love, send it away to Mother Earth. So these are all different ways that you can balance yourself. You know, now, which one is better than the other? It really depends on who you are and what's, um, what you want to do. Because let's say um, everyone can can most likely take a shower, but if you let's say you you go to a place that <clears throat> you there's no shower available, then you can do something like um, use the the earth. You just connect with Mother Earth because that is something that you can do just with your imagination. Just do a, a short meditation, connect with Mother Earth, and then invite energy in. But if you are a kind of person that likes to, you don't want to think too much, you just want to, you know, take a bath and just set the intention before you, you go into the, the, the bath or shower that I want to use this water to assist me in clearing out everything that is in balance in my energy center, then you know, that's as simple as it gets. So you, um, once you understand the principles is everything is energy and energy goes where your mind tells it to do. So, so these are all the, all that you need to do. Once you, you understand these two principles, then you can, um, make your own variations. Um, so I think that's all I want to cover in terms of how to balance. Um, oh, okay, yes, I, I, there's some more things I want to actually 
um, point out. So where we are at right now, even though we have like all of these different chakras, but in this in this time frame, I feel that the most important thing for you or most important um, energy centers for you to balance right now is really your heart chakra. Because um, your heart chakra is about connecting in universal love. This is really what we need most now. And this is really the part of the... Um, when your heart center is open enough, then actually all of your upper centers would be open as well. It would be... So if your heart chakra is not balanced, then uh, forget about balancing the other upper centers. Because you, the, the energy, no matter how much energy you can pull in from your first three chakras, if your heart chakra is not um, balanced, is, is out of balance, then your whole energy field is just out of whack. So that's what I mean by, that's why I think that for this moment, the most important energy center to balance is your heart. That's why I do, when I do meditation, um, I always go to the heart because when you, when your heart is balanced, then everything else will fall into place, more or less. And if, if your heart is not balanced, then nothing else matters. So... <laughs> So that's so uh, <clears throat> that's that's my opinion, entirely my opinion. I just want to to point out, but um, that's that's what I want to mention is that um, from my point of view, balancing your heart in this in this time frame is really the most important thing that you need to do. And you can disagree with me; that's perfectly fine. But you know. That's what I feel is that when, if your heart is, is open, if your heart is balanced, then um, everything else will be fine because you're human. We are all human. We, we're not here to be perfect. We are here to be, to have this human um, experience. So um, yes, we will all have some issues with, various chakras here and now and, and all over the, the, the place. And um, that's, that's okay. It, we, will, we will get it. Um, we have time to, to balance all this out. However, in this moment, in this time period when we are going through so much change, when your heart is in the right place, then it will you will um, you will end up in the right place as well. So that's what I'm trying to say. And that's my <laughs> that's my two cents worth.